Patanjali Sanskrit, Patanjali is the name of one or more authors of a number of Sanskrit works. A great deal of scholarship has been devoted over the last century or so to the issue of the historicity or identity of this author or these authors. Amongst the more important authors called Patanjali are the author of the Mahabhasya, an ancient treatise on Sanskrit grammar and linguistics, based on the Astadhyayi of Panini. This Patanjali's life is dated to mid 2nd century BCE by both Western and Indian scholars. This text was titled as a basya or commentary on Katyayana Panini's work by Patanjali, but is so revered in the Hindu traditions that it is widely known simply as Maha Basya or Great Commentary. So vigorous, well reasoned, and vast is his text, that this Patanjali has been the authority as the last grammarian of classical Sanskrit for two thousand years, with Panini and Katyayana preceding him. Their ideas on structure, grammar and philosophy of language have also influenced scholars of other Indian religions such as Buddhism and Jainism. The compiler of the Yoga Sutras, a text on yoga theory and practice, and a notable scholar of Samkhya school of Hindu philosophy. He is variously estimated to have lived between 2nd century BCE to 4th century CE, with more scholars accepting dates between 2nd and 4th century CE. The Yoga Sutras is one of the most important texts in the Hindu tradition and the foundation of classical yoga. It is the Indian yoga text that was most translated in its medieval era into 40 Indian languages. Also, the third chapter is the basis for the TM Siddhis. The author of a medical text called Patanjalatantra. He is cited and this text is quoted in many medieval health sciences related texts, and Patanjali is called a medical authority in a number of Sanskrit texts such as Yogaratnakara, Yogaratnazamukhaya and Patarthavanyana. There is a fourth Hindu scholar also named Patanjali, who likely lived in 8th century CE and wrote a commentary on Sharaka Samhita and this text is called Karakavartaka. According to some modern era Indian scholars such as P. V. Sharma, the two medical scholars named Patanjali may be the same person, but completely different person from the Patanjali who wrote the Sanskrit grammar classic Mahabhasya. Patanjali is one of the 18 siddhars in the Tamil Siddha Shaiva tradition. Topic: <inaudible> Jiva Samadhi. He is said to have attained samadhi through yogic meditation at the Brahmapureswarar temple located at Tirupattur, Tamil Nadu, India. Topic: <inaudible> Name. <inaudible> According to Monier Monier Williams, the word Patanjali is a compound name from Pata, Sanskrit, falling, flying, and on, on, honor, celebrate, beautiful, or Anjali, Anjali, reverence, joining palms of the hand. Topic: Life. Louis Renou was among the many scholars who have suggested that the Patanjali who wrote on yoga was a different person than the Patanjali who wrote a commentary on Panini's grammar. In 1914 James Wood proposed that they were the same person. In 1922, Surendranath Dasgupta presented a series of arguments to tentatively propose that the famed grammar text and the yoga text author may be identical. The view that these were likely two different authors is generally accepted, but some Western scholars consider them as a single entity. Some in the Indian tradition have held that one Patanjali wrote treatises on grammar, medicine, and yoga. This has been memorialized in a verse by Bhoja at the start of his commentary on the Yoga Sutras called Rajamartanda 11th century, and the following verse found in Shivarama's 18th century text Yojina Chittasya Padina Vikam Malam Sararasya Ka Vedyakina Yopakaratam Pravaram Munanam Patanyalim Pranyalaranatasmi English translation I bow with my hands together to the eminent sage Patanyali, who removed the impurities of the mind through yoga, of speech through grammar, and of the body through medicine. This tradition is discussed by Mullenbelt, who traces this relatively late 
Idea back to Boja, 11th century, who was perhaps influenced by a verse by Bhartarhari, ca. 5th century, that speaks of an expert in yoga, medicine, and grammar who, however, is not named. No known Sanskrit text prior to the 10th century states that the one and the same Patanjali was behind all the three treatises. Topic: <laughs> Grammar tradition. In the grammatical tradition, Patanjali is believed to have lived in the 2nd century BCE. He wrote a Mahabhasya on Panini's sutras, in a form that quoted the commentary of Katyayana's Vartikas. This is a major influential work on Sanskrit grammar and linguistics. The dating of Patanjali and his Mahabhasya is established by a combination of evidence, those from the Maurya Empire period, the historical events mentioned in the examples he used to explain his ideas, the chronology of ancient classical Sanskrit texts that respect his teachings, and the mention of his text or his name in ancient Indian literature. Of the three ancient grammarians, the chronological dating of Patanjali to mid 2nd century BCE is considered as reasonably accurate by mainstream scholarship the text influenced buddhist grammatical literature as well as memoirs of travelers to india for example the chinese pilgrim i sing mentions that the mahabhasya is studied in india and advanced scholars learn it in 3 years topic <laughs> yoga tradition In the yoga tradition, Patanjali is a revered name. This Patanjali's oeuvre comprises the sutras about yoga, yoga sutra and the commentary integral to the sutras, called the Bhasya. Some consider the sutras and the Bhasya to have had different authors, the commentary being ascribed to an editor. Skt. Vyasa. According to Philip Moss, the same person named Patanjali composed the sutras and the Bhasya commentary. Radhakrishnan and more attribute the text to the grammarian Patanjali, dating it as 2nd century BCE, during the Maurya Empire. 322 BCE. Moss estimates Patanjali's Yogasutra's date to be about 400 CE, based on tracing the commentaries on it published in the 1st millennium CE. Edwin Bryant, on the other hand, surveys the major commentators in his translation of the Yoga Sutras. He states that, "...most scholars date the text shortly after the turn of the Common Era circa 1st to 2nd century, but that it has been placed as early as several centuries before that." Bryant concludes that, a number of scholars have dated the Yoga Sutras as late as the 4th or 5th century CE, but these arguments have all been challenged." And late chronology for this Patanjali and his text are problematic. <laughs> Tamil Saivite legend Regarding his early years, a Tamil Saiva Siddhanta tradition from around 10th century AD holds that Patanjali learned yoga along with seven other disciples from the great yogic guru Nandi Deva, as stated in Tirumalar's Tirumandaram Tantra 1. Nandi Arulpetra Nadarai Nadanam Nandigal Nulvar Shiva Yoga Mamuni Mandru Thazuda Patanjali Vyakramar Endravar Enodu Tirumolar and Maramame. Translation: We sought the feet of the God who graced Nandiksvara. The four Nandis: Sivayoga Muni, Patanjali, Virapada, and I, Tirumolar. We were these eight. Topic: Works. <laughs> <laughs> Whether the two works, the Yoga Sutras and the Mahabhasya, are by the same author has been the subject of considerable debate. The authorship of the two is first attributed to the same person in Bojadeva's Rajamartanda, a relatively late 10th century commentary on the Yoga Sutras, as well as several subsequent texts. As for the texts themselves, the Yoga Sutra E.44 cites a sutra as that from Patanjali by name, but this line itself is not from the Mahabhasya. This 10th-century legend of single authorship is doubtful. 
The literary styles and contents of the Yoga Sutras and the Mahabhasya are entirely different, and the only work on medicine attributed to Patanjali is lost. Sources of doubt include the lack of cross references between the texts, and no mutual awareness of each other, unlike other cases of multiple works by later Sanskrit authors. Also, some elements in the Yoga Sutras may date from as late as the 4th century AD, but such changes may be due to divergent authorship, or due to later editions which are not atypical in the oral tradition. Most scholars refer to both works as by Patanjali without meaning that they are by the same author. In addition to the Mahabhasya and Yoga Sutras, the 11th century commentary on Sharaka by the Bengali scholar Kakrapanidatta, and the 16th century text Patanjalikarita ascribes to Patanjali a medical text called the Karakapratisamskrta now lost, which is apparently a revision of the medical treatise by Karaka, while there is a short treatise on yoga in the medical work called the Karakasamita by Karaka, towards the end of the chapter called Sarairasthana, it is notable for not bearing much resemblance to the Yoga Sutras, and in fact presents a form of eightfold yoga that is completely different from that laid out by Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras and the commentary Yoga Sutrabhasya. <laughs> <laughs> yoga Sutra The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali are 196 Indian Sutras aphorisms on yoga. It was the most translated ancient Indian text in the medieval era, having been translated into about 40 Indian languages and two non-Indian languages, Old Javanese and Arabic. The text fell into obscurity for nearly 700 years from the 12th to 19th century, and made a comeback in late 19th century due to the efforts of Swami Vivekananda and others. It gained prominence again as a comeback classic in the 20th century. Before the 20th century, history indicates the Indian yoga scene was dominated by other yoga texts such as the Bhagavad Gita, Yoga Vasistha, and Yoga Yajnavalka. Scholars consider the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali formulations as one of the foundations of classical yoga philosophy of Hinduism. Mahabhasya The Mahabhasya great commentary of Patanjali on the Astadhyayi of Panini is a major early exposition on Panini, along with the somewhat earlier Vartika by Katyayana. Patanjali relates to how words and meanings are associated. Patanjali claims Shabdapramana, that the evidentiary value of words is inherent in them, and not derived externally, the word meaning association is natural. These issues in the word meaning relation symbol would be elaborated in the Sanskrit linguistic tradition, in debates between the Mimamsa, Nyaya and Buddhist schools over the next 15 centuries. Sphota Patanjali also defines an early notion of Svota, which would be elaborated considerably by later Sanskrit linguists like Bhartrahari. In Patanjali, a Svota from Svut, spurt, burst, is the invariant quality of speech. The noisy element dh vani, audible part, can be long or short, but the Svota remains unaffected by individual speaker differences. Thus, a single letter or sound varna such as k, p or a is an abstraction, distinct from variants produced in actual enunciation. This concept has been linked to the modern notion of phoneme, the minimum distinction that defines semantically distinct sounds. Thus a phoneme is an abstraction for a range of sounds. However, in later writings, especially in Bhartrahari 6th century CE, the notion of sphota changes to become more of a mental state, preceding the actual utterance, akin to the lemma. Patanjali's writings also elaborate some principles of morphology prakriya. .In the context of elaborating on Panini's aphorisms, he also discusses Katyayana's commentary, which are also aphoristic and sutra-like. In the later tradition, these were transmitted as embedded in Patanjali's discussion. In general, he defends many positions of Panini which were interpreted somewhat differently in Katyayana. Topic: Metaphysics as grammatical motivation. 
Unlike Panini's objectives in the Ashtyadayi, which is to distinguish correct forms and meanings from incorrect ones Patanjali's objectives are more metaphysical. These include the correct recitations of the scriptures agama, maintaining the purity of texts raksha, clarifying ambiguity asamdeha, and also the pedagogic goal of providing an easier learning mechanism lagu. This stronger metaphysical bent has also been indicated by some as one of the unifying themes between the Yoga Sutras and the Mahabhasya, although a close examination of actual Sanskrit usage by Woods showed no similarities in language or terminology. The text of the Mahabhasya was first critically edited by the 19th century Orientalist Franz Kielhorn, who also developed philological criteria for distinguishing Katyayana's voice. From Patanjali's, subsequently, a number of other editions have come out. The 1968 text and translation by S. D. Joshi and J. H. F. Rudbergen often being considered definitive. Regrettably, the latter work is incomplete. Patanjali also writes with a light touch. For example, his comment on the conflicts between the orthodox Brahmanich Astika groups, versus the heterodox, Nastika groups Buddhism, Jainism, and atheists seems relevant for religious conflict even today. The hostility between these groups was like that between a mongoose and a snake. He also sheds light on contemporary events, commenting on the recent Greek incursion, and also on several tribes that lived in the northwest regions of the subcontinent. Patanjali Tantra Patanjali is also the reputed author of a medical text called Patanjala, also called Patanjala or Patanjala Tantra. This text is quoted in many yoga and health-related Indian texts. Patanjali is called a medical authority in a number of Sanskrit texts such as Yogaratnakara, Yogaratnazamukhaya, Padarthavanyana, Kakradata Bhasya. Some of these quotes are unique to Patanjala, but others are also found in major Hindu medical treatises such as Sharaka Samhita and Sushruta Samhita. There is a fourth scholar also named Patanjali, who likely lived in 8th century CE and wrote a commentary on Sharaka Samhita, and this text is called Karakavartaka. The two medical scholars named Patanjali may be the same person, but generally accepted to be completely different person than the Patanjali who wrote the Sanskrit grammar classic Mahabhasya. See also Bhartrahari Yoga Sutras of Patanjali Yoga Vashista Yoga Yajnavalka Vedanga <laughs>